Hey guys, so I want to do a quick video here um, just on showing the numbers behind how these policies line up and what makes them go and, and tick. Um, but most importantly, the cost of waiting. And I've you know talked with some guys in the past and most people said, let me dip my toe in this thing. Let me figure this out before I really dive in and get into it. And that's okay. I understand why um, if you're not completely sold or you don't understand how infinite banking works, I can understand totally why people would would say, well, let me just kind of slow play at first. But there's a major cost to slow playing. There's a huge cost to waiting. And I just want to show a comparison here of, you know, Johnny Appleseed at age 30, who puts in $10,000 a year for 10 years in a row to $100,000 total. And then also Johnny Appleseed, who said, you know what, I'm going to wait three years. I'm going to hold on and wait three years. I'm going to dump in $30,000 because he understands it three years from now for, for the same amount of $100,000, but yet he uh, he waited three years. I want just to show you the differences um, between between going at it right now, even if it's a smaller number, but starting versus waiting and then going, even if you have the same number. So look at this for a second. There's nothing crazy about these these contracts out of the gate, okay? It takes a little bit of time to get going and to build, you know, momentum. So in the very first year, you can see, or the very t first 10 years, he's only made about 7,000, 7,800 bucks in, in positive net cash value over his outlay, okay? But then you see in year 11, he doesn't put another dollar into this contract for the rest of his life, okay? He's got a permanent death benefit of $481,000, okay? But let's just see what happens here over the course in the lifetime of this contract. The next 10 years, he's not doing anything wrong. He's taking this money. He's going to go put it into an investment somewhere. That's going to throw off cash flow. He's going to go purchase a vehicle. He's going to go buy um, a vacation. He's going to do anything he wants with this money. This is what the contractual policy has to do. It goes up $66,000. And then the next 10 years, he's up $154,000. Next 10 years, he's up $285,000. And then in the last portion of this life where it's really, really cranked out. He's got about over $578,000. So $478,000 of net uh, cash value over his cash outlay. And then when he graduates uh, into the next life at 85, he's got $705,000 of net cash value and an $878,000 death benefit. I want to compare this now to our other friend who said, you know what? Well, I like it. I'm, I'm just not going to uh, dive in just quite yet. But let me let me study it a little bit. So here we go. Let's do it like this. Okay, so let's compare these two here. So you've got this guy over here in the very first ten years. You see, he waited, but he but he popped in thirty thousand dollars out of the gate. So he's still at a hundred thousand dollars, but he's just three years tardy. He did it as Tony Robbins would say. You cannot earn your way to compound interest. You can only you cannot earn your way to wealth. You can only compound your way to wealth. And so this is the name of the game is just getting started. This guy's a little tardy and just see the biggest see how big of a difference this makes over his lifetime. This is just one policy. So like I said, the first guy, first Johnny, he's up 7800. This guy's down $7200 out of the gate. He's up 38,000, 38,000 to 66,000. And then 110,000 to 154,000. 214,000 to 285,000, 366 to 478. And you can see here, I made this number right here um, showing just the differences here, but you can see here, man, I mean, someone, this guy's 546 and a $680,000 death benefit, while a guy who just got started earlier, no cash flows were different, just he just started earlier. Look how much more he had at the end of this cycle than someone who did, who waited three years. Think about it, in his life, like 50 years prior to that. So um, he has almost $59,000 of extra cash just by getting started. So if you're on the fence about infinite banking, you're not understanding things, call me. Let's discuss how you can implement this into your life because you're not doing anything different. There's nothing different in your life other than just where you're housing your cash. And so when you see how these things work out over time, you don't just have, if you really, if you really think about it, and then I'll be quiet after this, but after those 10 years where you've basically put in 100 grand, you've got $107,000 of cash value. You've now got a $481,000 permanent death benefit. Ask yourself if you even paid anything for that death benefit. Sure, it took you 10 years to get there, but now you have all your cash back plus a permanent death benefit. So that's the way I'm looking at this. You don't, we don't do this for death benefit. We do it for cash value, but it's always a nice box to check. So if you're thinking about this, ask yourself in your own head right here, if you could put as much money into a Roth IRA 
that you can contribute to. There's, there's no level to this. Ask yourself how much money you would put into a Roth IRA right now. The answer is probably as much as you could. And that's exactly what this is. This is what we're talking about is an unlimited amount. They call it the rich man's Roth is infinite banking. So think about this as just a way better house for your cash than any other thing that's out there.